This child has been destined to be the carrier of demons since birth, because he was born on an eclipse day. In order to prevent the demons from descending upon the human world, a priest took the child to a church and prepared to kill him. However, just as he raised the knife to kill the child, the police arrived in time and shot the priest, successfully saving the child. Little did they know, this rescue would lead to significant consequences. Thirty years later, the child was named Marek. Because he grew up in the police station, Marek became a policeman himself when he grew up. Later, in the small town, seven women went missing consecutively, and the only connection between them was that they had all been possessed by demons. They were all taken away by the same monastery, and they all died during exorcism because they couldn't withstand it. Based on his years of experience in handling cases, Myrick believed that the disappearance of these women was not simple. In order to find out the truth, Myrick disguised himself as a priest and went to the monastery. The appearance of the monastery looked suspicious, and it exuded a strange atmosphere everywhere. But Myrick was brave and not afraid. Even if there were ghosts, he wanted to find the missing women. Soon, the monastery conducted a search on Marek but found nothing suspicious and decided to take him in. However, shortly after, Marek felt that the monastery was very strange. The food they ate every day was hard to swallow, and Marek also noticed that there were many small rooms in the monastery, all of which were inhabited by people possessed by demons. Their crazy appearance made people think they had entered a mental hospital. At first, Mark was just curious about these things because he always believed that there were no demons in this world. Even if there were, they were just people pretending. But soon, an exorcism ritual completely shattered Merrick's worldview. Only to see a group of priests, led by Prior Andrzejze, were going to exorcise a girl. Mark saw that there were indeed women in the monastery. However, his attention was quickly drawn to the exorcism ritual. Prior Andrew's age sprinkled holy water on the girl and then started reading the Bible. Unexpectedly, with the sound of the Bible, the girl's body began to convulse continuously. Then the frequency of the girl's convulsions increased, and even the bed started shaking. The priest immediately took out a cross and aimed it at the girl. The sound of reading the Bible also became louder and louder. As a result, the girl sat up and let out a roar. Next second, the cross suddenly caught fire. This scene shocked Marek. Wow, could there really be ghosts? No, Marek couldn't handle it. He needed to go to the bathroom to wash his face and calm down. But when he looked up, he discovered a crack in the mirror in front of him. He gently touched it, and the whole mirror cracked open. At the same time, a hidden door opened on the wall. Marek looked at the door with some hesitation. If this had happened when he first arrived at the monastery, he would have rushed in without hesitation. But after witnessing the exorcism ritual, he was genuinely scared. He decided to be good and just focus on investigating the missing women case instead of getting involved in unnecessary things. But Marek didn't expect that he would end up staying for a whole week without finding any clues. The food the monks ate was driving him crazy. It wasn't his fault that he was picky. The food was just too terrible. Marek would vomit after eating. And on this day, right after finishing his meal, when Mark was hunched over the toilet, he suddenly felt something wrong with his teeth. He reached in and accidentally pulled out one of his molars. Before Marek could even be surprised, the tooth shattered and black fly flew out of it. Marek felt that this place was becoming more and more eerie. He needed to find clues and leave as soon as possible. Marek thought about it, and he hadn't been to the priest's office or the crowded kitchen. He had searched almost everywhere else, but found no clues about the missing women. Did he have to sneak into Prior Andrzej's office to search? That night, Marek broke into Prior Andrzej's office and searched it, but found nothing. Marek then went to the place where the exorcism ritual was held. And to his surprise, Marek discovered that the floor beside the bed could move. When he stepped on it, the bed moved. Marek immediately understood. This was not an exorcism ritual at all. It was all just a trick played by the priests. Then, Marek found the holy letter rack used by Prior Andrzej. As soon as he took it in his hand, Marek discovered the secret. It was actually a lighter. Feeling deceived, Marek became angry and grabbed his gun, ready to leave and find help. But the monastery's gate was already locked. At this moment, a priest who had been watching Marek told him not to try to leave 
because prior Andrew ZJ was monitoring his every move. Marek saw a hole and curiously reached in to explore it. To his surprise, he pulled out an eye. At first, he thought it was a model until the eye started moving. This startled Merrick, causing him to drop the eye and vomit on the ground. As he was recovering from the shock, he heard someone knocking on a door behind him. When he turned to look, the knocking abruptly stopped. However, as soon as Merrick felt relieved, he suddenly saw a ghost appear right in front of him. Marek was terrified and quickly reacted. The scene then shifted, and Merrick found himself standing in front of a cracked mirror. The ghost he saw earlier seemed like a hallucination, but when Merrick turned around, he saw the eyeball that had fallen on the floor. It was not a hallucination after all. In that moment, Merrick realized that prior Anders AJ was using the eyeballs to monitor the activities of each priest. As a policeman, Merrick couldn't tolerate this, so he crushed the eyeball with his foot. He decided that he couldn't stay in the monastery any longer. However, since he couldn't find any clues, he felt even more frustrated. As a result, he decided to go to the cemetery behind the monastery at night and dig up the graves to look for the missing woman's body. But when he opened a coffin, he found that there was nothing inside. Suddenly, someone put a sack over Merrick's head. And when he woke up again, he found himself tied to a bed with all his belongings taken away. It was clear that Merrick's identity had been exposed. However, to Merrick's surprise, instead of killing him, the group of priests brought him some food and forced him to eat it. The disgusting food made Merrick feel even worse than being killed. In order to escape, Merrick didn't dare to sleep at night. He managed to break free from the ropes when the guarding priest wasn't paying attention and ran out. As a result, he accidentally ended up in the monastery's kitchen. What he saw there shocked him. The pot was filled with human organs and intestines. Despite feeling nauseous, Merrick opened a secret door and saw the bodies of the seven missing women hanging there, all dismembered and incomplete. This reminded Merrick of the meat-like food they ate every day. Could it be that the meat was from these women's bodies? With this evidence of the monk's murders, Merrick was about to leave when he encountered Monk Piotr. It turned out that Monk Piotr had also discovered the secret of the monastery using the excuse of exorcism to kill women. He had thought about escaping before, but was caught and tortured. Monk Piotr was too afraid to try again. In order to explain the secrets of the monastery to Marek, they went to the library and found an ancient book. According to the records in the book, the demon would be reborn every hundred years, and the chosen child would have a unique eclipse mark. To destroy the nightmare, the child must be killed with a special dagger as soon as they are born. However, if the attempt fails, the child will grow up and consume the blood of seven guilty individuals and an innocent person. When that happens, the child will transform into a demon and descend upon the earth. Marek looked at the eclipse mark in the book and felt a sense of familiarity. Then he realized that the mark was identical to the one on his chest. It was at that moment that Merrick realized he was the vessel for the demon on earth. It was clear that the group of priests knew his identity and intentionally let him in. Their goal was to release the demon and create a new world. In order to escape, Marek followed Monk Piotr through an underground passage. Midway through the proceedings, they fell into an ambush. Marek, who had been defeated, looked up and saw Monk Piotr with a calm expression, as if mocking him. Marek grew furious, realizing that he had been deceived. He was truly going to become a demon this time. Marek was bound to the main stage, the chosen vessel for the demon in human form. The priests brought forth an innocent young girl and brutally murdered her, draining her blood. The priests then proceeded to taste the blood, firmly believing that if the ritual went smoothly, the demon would descend upon the earth. They believed that a new order would be established in the world, with themselves as the prominent figures. Soon, the ritual reached its final step, compelling Marek to drink the blood of the young girl. They followed with fervent prayers, and Prior Andrew Zay spread his arms, eagerly anticipating the arrival of the demonic master. However, nothing happened. They searched through ancient texts and contemplated the steps of the ritual. They tried again, but there was still no change. Seeing the priests in an embarrassing situation, Merrick began to laugh. 
This sudden turn of events completely shattered the priests' faith. They had consumed repulsive food for days, and yet it was all in vain. Feeling dejected, the priest prepared to leave. But as Prior Andrzej turned around, he realized that Merrick was of no use anymore. So, he killed Merrick. The wounded Marek was thrown into a well. That night, a despondent Prior Andrzej lit a cigarette. He couldn't comprehend why the demon hadn't descended. Firstly, Marek was the vessel for the demon. This was beyond doubt. Marek had consumed the flesh and blood of seven guilty women. And so had the priests. Finally, they had also drunk the innocent girl's blood during the ritual. The process was severe and should not have gone wrong. As Prior Andrzej pondered deeply, Monk Pyotr, harboring ulterior motives, approached to console him. He advised him not to get agitated and to prioritize his health by taking some rest. But as soon as Prior Andrzej fell asleep, Monk Pyotr smothered him with a pillow to secure his own ascension. The next day, Monk Pyotr claimed that Prior Andrzej had committed suicide out of guilt. Naturally, he assumed the position of Prior Andrzej. However, Monk Pyotr was unaware that Prior Andrzej's soul had transformed into a fly and flown away. Meanwhile, Marek, who had been thrown into the well, was unexpectedly influenced by the fly, which was the manifestation of Prior Andrzej's soul. Marek stood up, feeling a sharp pain coursing through his body, as if something was being expelled from within. Simultaneously, Monk Pyotr was leading everyone in organizing a funeral for Prior Andrzej. But when he tried to speak during the eulogy, he suddenly choked and couldn't utter a word. Then, Monk Pyotr's body slowly ascended into the air. Countless flies emerged from beneath his skin. Thus, Monk Pyotr perished. As the priest stood there in stunned silence, a half-human, half-goat-like demon appeared before them. Terrified, the priests attempted to run, but the demon held them in place. Why are you running? You summon me, and now you reject me, said the demon with a mocking tone. In the next instant, the bodies of the priests, under the control of the demon, began to levitate, turning upside down in the shape of a cross. At that moment, the demon looked toward the figure of Jesus above. It seemed to be saying that the power of hell was the most potent. Yet, Jesus, facing the provocation, immediately radiated vitality and began to confront the power of the demon. The walls of the monastery cracked open, revealing a long crevice. The withered trees and wild grass outside sprouted fresh leaves and flowers. In an instant, death and rebirth, hell and heaven manifested themselves in the monastery. But in the next moment, the sky split open and countless impurities descended from above. It seemed that what awaited the world was a true purgatory. Please subscribe to my channel. Share different movies and videos every day.